Thanks for tuning in. I wanted to share a project that I've recently been working on and have gone way down into a rabbit hole and wanted to uh, share this with you as I put together a couple of videos that demonstrate how I'm going to do inverted flight with my PixHawk mounted in my Bixler plane. So everything is mounted and flying well and I decided it would be cool to demonstrate how inverted flight works. I've never actually done it and you could argue that that's not very useful but I thought it would just be a fun series to do. And unfortunately I've run into a problem because I don't want to try to do inverted flight in the field. I want to uh, simulate it uh, with hardware in the loop and if you've watched any of my previous videos I've done hardware in the loop setup with APM and X-Plane but I'm new to doing it with PixHawk and what I've discovered after going through this hardware in the loop uh, setup for PixHawk to work with both Q ground control and X-Plane I've even tried it with Mission Planner and X-Plane is that the latest version of APM Plane which I believe is 3.5 uh, doesn't work correctly and this post suggests that that's the case. They recommend using APM Plane 3.3 to get hardware in the loop simulation working. So what I wanted to do was just take the time to walk you through how to build uh, the PixHawk firmware from source code. And, and the only reason I'm doing this, not because I wanted to get into this rabbit hole, but because uh, APM Plane 3.3 is no longer available on the firmware download site. And since I'm learning how to build this firmware, I figured I'd go ahead and put together a video demonstrating how to do it. Now, initially, I'm going to build the latest source just because building an older from a tag or branch uh, gets a little bit complicated. I'll follow up in a future video, but the ultimate goal is to get this built, load it onto PixHawk, and then in an upcoming video, I want to demonstrate hardware in the loop, simulation of inverted flight, then we'll take it to the field. The first thing you're gonna need is a Vagrant install. I'm on a Mac, so I have Vagrant running. I'm going to walk through the steps that demonstrate how to run these commands, and I'll also put them in the description below. Now, let me mention that a lot of the commands that you're going to run are a part of this wiki page here that shows how you can use Linux to do the build. So I'm going to use Vagrant and Ubuntu 32-bit. Unfortunately, I had a problem with 64-bit. So I'm just going to run this Vagrant init command. And you can see that it created a Vagrant file. And we'll go ahead and then bring the Linux VM up. Okay, our VM is up and running. Now I'm cutting out a lot of the wait time just so you guys don't have to sit through that. We'll go ahead and do a Vagrant SSH, which will connect us to the VM. And what we want to do next is we want to install the Git module that will allow us to pull the APM code onto the VM. Now that Git is installed, we will clone the repo. It's actually hosted at GitHub. And what that will do is that will download all of the code locally so that then we can go through the steps to compile it. Now with the code downloaded, I'll go ahead and just change into that directory. We will run git submodule init. And then we will do an update. Now we're almost ready to run the Ubuntu script that does a lot of the prerequisite installing. But let me share one thing that wasn't in the wiki that caught me off guard. So it's going to try to run a command called pip2. And what we need to do is install pip2 before we run that requirement. So we're going to download the Python script. And then I'll go ahead and execute it. And you can see now that if I run pip2, it recognizes the command and, and looks for various options. Now we're going to run our Ubuntu script. I'll put a time in front of it just so that we can see how long that it takes. This is the script that's part of the download and we'll go ahead and run it. You can see that took about two and a half minutes to complete. Now we're going to go ahead and store some of the settings into our path. I'll go ahead and log out of the VM 
Then I'll log back in. That's just a recommendation from the wiki page. Next up, we're going to add this user to the system. This next step is one that got me before, but it's basically downloading this uh, ARM cross compiler. So uh, it's documented in that wiki page as well. We'll go ahead and download that, unzip it, and then add it to our path so that we can use it. Now, I know these are a lot of steps here, but I'm trying to give you guys basically the most direct path to being able to compile this code. I went through a lot of uh, back and forth and hopefully this path makes it easy for you guys to do the same. Now with that downloaded, we'll go ahead and we'll unzip it in our home directory. With that cross compiler unzipped, we're now going to add it to our path so that when we make or build this code, it's able to pick up that path. The moment of truth is upon us. So we can see in the home directory we have the Arduipilot code, the cross compiler that we downloaded. So I'm going to go into Arduipilot and you'll see we have the different versions and I'm gonna go into Arduplain. And then we're going to run make px4-v2. V2 is the version for Pixhawk. And it will begin the build process. Okay, that took about five to six minutes to build this code and you can see we have a px4 file right here ready to go. So what I'll do now is just we'll grab this file and see if I can load it onto my Pixhawk board. I have QGround Control, this little rig that I've been using just to test hardware in the loop or I should say try to test. I'm going to connect Pixhawk and then we're going to go over to the firmware tab. We're going to do the PX4 flight stack, go to advanced settings. Under here, you'll see a custom firmware file option. Now, all of this applies to Mission Planner as well. I'm just using QGround Control because I've been messing with it recently. And then we're gonna go over to basically where we had Vagrant running. You can see this is Arduplane dash B2, the version that we just built. I'll go ahead and click open and you can see that it's erasing the previous firmware it's putting the version that we just built onto the board and let's just make sure that it completes okay. It says upgrade complete. Initializing flight mode, waiting for first HIL state message. So now we have the latest and greatest firmware of APM plane on Pixhawk. And once again, I'm going to be working on getting that 3.3 version on there doing hardware in the loop simulation for inverted flight, and then we'll take that to the field. I know this video was rather in depth, but I wanted to share that process as it took me quite a while to figure it out, even with the wiki documentation. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.